Okay, for this question then, we were given that n equals a times t to the power b and asked to show that we could express it in this form here. Now to do this, we need to take logs to both sides. I can see that just basically because we've got the log here and the log being used over this side. So take logs to base 10 to both sides and you should find that you've got something like this. Next, I'm going to look at this term here, the a times t to the power b. Remember, it's just the t that's raised to the power b. And I'm going to use the addition rule for logs. You should be familiar with it. It's this rule here, where if you've got the log of two things being multiplied together, say x and y in base n, same as log of x in base n, plus the log of y in base n. So if I use that rule here, then I can express this as the log of a in base 10 plus the log of t to the power b in base 10. Next, I need to look at this term here and I'm going to use the power rule for logs. Again, you should be familiar with this one. And that is, as a reminder, if you've got, say, the log of x to the power p in base n, it's the same as p times the log of x in base n. I just bring this power to the front of the log. And I can use that rule here. I can bring the b to the front of the log of t in base 10. If I do that, then I get this line here. Okay, so... This is looking like what we have to show here. I'm just going to swap these two terms around though if it's to be exactly correct. And then I can compare this to what we've got to show. It's identical to m log of t in base 10 plus c, where m clearly relates to that b there, and c is the same as the log of a in base 10. OK. OK, for this part of the question then, we've got to find n when t equals 3. And obviously we can't find it straight away because we just don't know the values of a and b. But we did find out from the previous part of the question that we were able to express this equation in this form here. And this form is very useful, especially when we've got this graph here, because it's got the form y equals mx plus c. You can see that for the y-axis, we're replacing it with the log of n in base 10. And for the x-axis, we're replacing x with the log in base 10 of t. So that means that b is given by the gradient and log of a in base 10 is given as the intercept here. So if we know then that b represents the gradient and the log of a in base 10 represents the intercept, we can get b very easily just by looking at that gradient and drawing a triangle. I've chosen this triangle. The bigger the triangle, the better your chances of getting a good estimate. Okay, And I've chosen then to take these two points here on the straight line. And we should be familiar with getting gradient. It's the difference in the y values that will give us this distance here, divided by the difference in the x values. That's that distance there. So to get this distance up here, I just need to get the y values. And reading them off, I can see that we have 4.55 here and 1.85 there. And as for the x values, this starts at 0 and this value here is 1.2. So to work out the gradient then, difference in y divided by the difference in x, I get 4.55, take away 1.85, that's the difference in y, divided by the difference in x, 1.2 minus 0. If you work that out, you get a gradient of 2.25, and that's our value of b. Okay, we just need to find a next, 
and that, I said, was the intercept. And we can see that the intercept is at 1.85. So that means that the log of a in base 10 must be 1.85. And to get a, I just take the inverse of this. That would be that a is equal to the base, that's base 10, raised to the power 1.85. You should be familiar with that result. Now you could work this out, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it as that value. And now I'm in a position to work out the value of n when t equals 3. It's just a question of substituting t equals 3 in here and our values for a and b. So you would get this sum here. And if you work this out, you'll find that you get 838.53 and so on. And if you give it to, say, one significant figure, it's 800. Leave it up to you, OK? If you gave it, say, to two significant figures, it's going to be 840. Three significant figures, 839. OK, so, but I'm just going to leave it as 800 to one significant figures. OK, so I hope that's uh, given you some idea on how to do that. OK, so if n equals 1 million, then why is it going to be unreliable to use this graph to find the value of t? And the reason is that if we look at this axis here, where we've got the log of n in base 10, I would need to find out what value I would need to look up on this scale in order to work out the value of t. So I would know then that to do that, the log of 1 million in base 10 is equal to 6. Ah, got a problem. Because the highest value that we've recorded here is 4.5 not 6. We're assuming, if we were to carry on, that this line carries on up here. And we would take our value of 6, let's say it's there, look across here, down here, and onto this scale here. But you can see, it's not necessarily going to give us the right result. This graph, as I say, we're assuming it's a straight line. It might go off in that direction. It might in fact go off in that direction afterwards. So it's going to be an unreliable result purely because we cannot extrapolate beyond what this graph is. And I've summarized that in this statement here, that since the log of n in base 10, this axis here only has a maximum reading of 4.5 then we cannot extrapolate beyond this value as it may be unreliable. OK? Now, for this last part of the question, to say what the meaning of A is, we can get this by looking at the equation that we've got here. If we were to set t equal to 1, what we end up with is that n equals a times 1 to the power b. Now 1 raised to the power b, raised to anything, is always going to be 1. So what we end up with is n equals a times 1, n equals simply a. So we see from this then that when t equals 1, n equals a, and that must mean that a represents the number of microbes after one day of the experiment. Okay?